So before I start this video, I have like a little link in the description right now. It's to a poll, basically, like a little straw poll. And it has to do with like a Kickstarter that I'm going to be doing in the future. And I just need some like feedback. It'll take you like five seconds max to do it. So if you could help me out and click that, that'd be great. So without further ado, I'm going to start talking to you about love triangles. I know that love triangles aren't exactly loved by all people. It's become a bit of a meme to hate on them, especially in the YA sphere. Me, I don't hate love triangles. I love love triangles. I love other love shapes too, but for the sake of this, I just want to defend my love of love triangles and give writers a different way to approach them and think about them. When first addressing the issue of love triangles, we must first address why so many people find them to be distasteful. So here are some things that come to mind when I think about why people hate love triangles. Number one, love triangles are often forced. Number two, love triangles are often predictable. And number three, love triangles are often shallow in conflict. Ideally, when writing a love triangle, your goal should be to eliminate these three things. So let's dig into these one at a time. So number one, love triangles feel forced. The reason that love triangles feel forced is sort of a multi-layered issue. One reason is that your main character has no reason to like one of the characters or sometimes both of the characters. I'd refer back to my previous video on chemistry for this. I'll leave a link above right now. But when you're building a love triangle, you need to work on building up the chemistry of both relationship options. And the second thing you want to consider is, do you need a love triangle in the first place? Putting a love triangle in every story for the sake of it really drove up the hate for this trope, honestly. When you add a love triangle to your work, you're signing up for a pretty major plot arc in most cases. So either be prepared to do it justice, or just don't add it in. Overlapping with this a lot is then number two, love triangles are predictable. Going back to what I said previously, there often isn't much fun to be had in a love triangle with no interesting love interest options. If your protagonist is choosing between two equally bland pieces of toast, that's boring. But what's even more frustrating is when your protagonist has to choose between wet bread and a cinnamon roll. Unless the hero comes around to realizing that they actually like wet bread, there isn't anything interesting here. Now, you don't have to completely turn a love triangle on its face to get a good result here. You need to create doubt. In a love triangle, the one that doesn't end up with your main character, that love interest is always going to be the antagonist. Not a villain, not evil, though you can do that, but by the very nature of being the alternative option means that this character will always be getting in the way of a happy ending, and therefore they are an antagonist, they put pressure. And if your character poses very little threat, if you never actually can believe that this love interest is a viable option at all, then there's a predictability problem. If the loser in a love triangle never has a chance, there's no point in there being a love triangle. And finally, we get to the most important issue. Number three, love interests are shallow. Here's the secret, they shouldn't be. When I approach a love triangle, I look at it as a fundamental part of a character arc. Like hinted at earlier, in a love triangle, one character is the antagonist, one option is the relationship character. Each of these characters sort of represents a bigger choice as part of your main character's struggle. As I've said in previous videos, the romantic interest is most often a character that helps the, the main character overcome their flaw. Instead of having your character lamenting um, that they're not able to pick between their two date options, which will feel very shallow, attach a greater significance to the romantic options presented. One character could mean staying in a comfort zone, while another character could mean adventure. There is an incredible range of exploration and subversion to be explored. Maybe the relationship character helps the main character come to terms with their flaw, but they realize that they just want to be friends in the end, and maybe the main character ends up getting with the antagonists anyways, but it's all good because it was all set up nicely. Maybe the antagonist 
is the villain. Like, maybe the relationship character kind of sucks and needs to stop being a butthead, you know? You know, like, that could work. Oh wait, it has in uh, Disney's Beauty and the Beast and Pride and Prejudice. There you go. That is an example of a well-structured alternative take on a love triangle. But before I sign off, let's design a love triangle plot. Let's let's get into this so that you have a bit of an example. I want to do this more. I'll try my best. Sometimes I'm not feeling so great. Okay, we'll use the plot graph that I used back in my plot 101 video. Link to that right now. So the type of plot we're going to be making is a big fantasy kind of plot that has a love triangle at its core. Um, our main character is Lady Blackwater. Um, she's a sorceress and she wants to enjoy her life. She values her own joys over the entirety of humanity. And, th and that's just the way she likes it. All right. We start with our introduction. Lady Blackwater is partying, living her best life in the province of monsters. She's got like a mega crush on the Lord of Shadows. And then our call to action happens. One day, Princess Emerald shows up in the province of monsters. She begs Lady Blackwater water for aid in ending this kind of earth-ending cataclysm that's about to happen. That brings us to our refusal of the call. Lady Blackwater considers it, but she's not especially interested, and when the Lord of Shadows comes by and he makes fun of the whole thing, she's like, yeah, I'm not doing that. And that moves us to the acceptance of the call, which happens shortly after. So Lady Emerald continues to barter and beg Lady Blackwater for help, and Eventually, Lady Blackwater agrees to help the princess if she agrees to be her servant in the province of monsters when all is said and done. Since it's a serious world-ending issue, Emerald agrees. Our story begins. Rising action then follows. Emerald and Blackwater begin to travel together and work at solving this, this big issue thing. They start to kind of become reluctant friends, and then we reach our midpoint. And at our midpoint, they reach what Blackwater was promised to be the end of their quest. Unfortunately, things are more complicated than Emerald first imagined. Blackwater considers leaving, but decides against it because she's kind of getting invested in things a little bit. Won't admit it up front, but it's in there, and she continues on. Uh, we continue some more rising action. Emerald and Blackwater start becoming even closer and closer, and they start kind of crushing on each other. It, it all intensifies. Meanwhile, Blackwater is trying to convince herself that she's totally not into Emerald, even though she totally is. And that all culminates in our low point. And our low point begins when it starts to become clear that in order to save the world, Blackwater is going to have to give up her magic. So she nopes out of this hard because she's like, nope, I like my magic. I, I don't care about the world. I'm Lady Blackwater. That's what I do. So she nopes out when Emerald is in a dire time of need. And so Blackwater goes off and goes back to Lord of the Shadows to live in the province of monsters. She's like, eh, it's fine. Everything's fine. But that all leads us to our climax. Lady Blackwater realizes that being with the Lord of Shadows isn't something she's interested in anymore. She realizes that her values have completely shifted in her time with Emerald and that she's totally fallen in love. So she goes off and she goes and saves the day. A resolution then follows as in the aftermath, Blackwater is weakened greatly and Emerald is so happy to have her back and they decide not to have like a servant relationship thing and instead Blackwater goes to live with her in her kingdom and they live happily ever after and that is our love triangle. There you go. And uh, as I say at the end of any one of these like plot arc thingies that I do, this is just one way to do it. Love triangles have like extreme amounts of variation. Like I promise you this. If you think of them in a much wider, less tropey lens, there's so much that you can do with them. And that's why I like them so much. A well enough integrated love triangle isn't going to even feel like a love triangle to most people. And the types of love triangles that people don't hate they, they just don't notice them. And that's kind of like the goal is to, to sneak them in like vegetables. So there you go. Um, I hope that helps. I hope that explains my love of them a little bit. There you go. Um, I guess I'm going to sign off here. Time to blather on. Yeah, check the, the straw poll in the description for me. 
I'm really excited about this Kickstarter thing that I'm going to do in the spring, I think. I'll probably talk about it more and like develop it more, but yeah, that, that would help. And if you want more writing advice, I guess subscribe. If you like my my beautiful story that I made off the fly there, please consider supporting the, the stories that I spent more time on, which are like on our Etsy and on our Gumroad. So there is that. And if you you don't like me and would rather talk to other comic artists, that's cool too, I guess. Um, we have a Discord. You can make friends there. And yeah, thank you all for coming. I guess tonight we also have our usual Twitch stream, bearing in mind our internet sometimes sucks on Friday nights and only Friday nights. All right, that's enough housekeeping. Uh, see you guys next Thursday, Friday. Frick.